What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Cards and Coffee and today we've officially made it to 2010. We're opening Absolute Power Force and the Shining Darkness. Last week I really couldn't figure out what the heck I wanted to play and while I had some really good pulls I just couldn't find a way to use them. I fell back on Black Wings and the deck wasn't bad or anything but Ricardo brought a crazy chaos Black Wing and yeah that thing really took me out. But like I mentioned, we're in 2010 now. We are opening two more sets that offer quite a bit of support for very miscellaneous things. But there is a few things I have my eyes on for this week. So I'm very excited to crack this open. It's been a while, but we have the loser's wheel this week. And I'm pretty sure Ricardo is going to be happy that he's got the winner's wheel this week. But first, as always, guys, please go grab yourself a cup of coffee or something. That way you guys can sit down and tune in. Thanks, guys. Well, Magical Scientist and Dark Strike Fighter uh, abused their way to get me back into the winner's circle. And while it does feel really dirty, I got to admit this feel going, good going forward, knowing that Dark Strike Fighter and Magical Scientist are both banned. So uh, we just never have to worry about those two cards again. You saw how problematic Strike Fighter has been in the past couple of weeks. And of course, Magical Scientist was just the card that was waiting to go off. Uh, it had one nice little showing, and now we're pretty much just going to go ahead and sideline it. Um, that being said, let's spin the wheel twice here. Once for Ancient Prophecy and once for Stardust Overdrive. There's not much I really want from either of these two sets, so... Uh, Alright, so we're going to be pulling a secret out of, out of Ancient. So from Ancient, we're going to go ahead and pick up Akasha. Um, again, there wasn't really much here in terms of the secrets available. Um, I much rather would have pulled like an ancient pixie dragon, but Kasha is a nice zombie and of course we do have some zombies Backing us up. So Kasha seems to be the obvious choice once again much like ancient prophecy Not really much. I want from Stardust Overdrive. Uh, like I said this past week was pretty much fillery So I can't really say I want this card. I want that card because honestly, I don't really want anything um, And it looks like we'll pick up a rare and not many very options this week So I'm gonna go ahead and pick up the gin release or rituals um, I don't think I've really played any rituals in this series so far. That could change in the future. And you know, if we do, the Djinn is just here as a nice option to support that, that playstyle. So once again, we picked up Akasha and the Djinn Releaser of Rituals this week. All right, so the loser's wheel. Our odds of hitting something good has definitely been decreased, but I'm still pretty optimistic. Ancient Prophecy, hopefully we can hit something good. Give us a little edge going into next week. <laughs> All right, we got a common. So I think for common, I'm gonna grab another copy of Rekindling. I don't remember if I already have my playset, but I think I only had two, so this would complete the playset either way. I don't know if it'll ever come up, but that card is very insane, so if ever I have the opportunity to play it, then at least I'll have a playset. All right, Stardust Overdrive. Hopefully we get something better than common. I'm really just ready to open these packs though. Uh, okay, that's better than common, I guess. Super rare, I'll take it. There are a couple of super rares I guess I could grab, and I think I'm actually going to grab a Gateway of the Six Samurai. I'm missing quite a bit of the support, but this is definitely the best card in the deck. So if ever my pulls are decent in the future, which actually is only a couple episodes away, maybe I'd be able to abuse this. Again, it's just the one copy, so it's not going to be full power or anything, and I'm missing the draw card for the deck as well, so... I don't know, I'm just gonna grab it just in case cause I'd hate to miss it if I had the opportunity to actually grab it. All in all, the wheel's pretty average this week, but I'm really excited for the openings. I'll see you guys at the pack opener. The first set of the week is Absolute Power Force and there's honestly a lot of pretty decent cards in here. We do get a lot of plant support, uh, a couple cards that probably won't see play like Supe and The Ant, but you know, there are cards in the future that do make those a little more playable, but really the only card that I want from this set at all is Drill Warrior. So let us will it into existence. Here's Drill Warrior, Drill Warrior, Drill Warrior, the Drill Synchron, Drill Warrior, Drill Warrior, Drill Warrior. There he is, there's the boy. My quick draw now has a second monster to go into. I'm good for this set, let's keep going. All right. 24 packs of absolute power force, hoping for some of the low rarity stuff like Venus Chain and the Nimble Hamster. They're both super, so hopefully we can at least hit one. And Descendant is a rare this week, so hopefully I can bag a couple of those as well. I don't know if Grave Keepers is the way this week, but on paper, Necro Valley seems to be a pretty good card against what Ricardo's been doing. 
If he's on a lot of black wings again, then maybe not, but we'll see what happens. First pack, ultimate rare alchemist of black spells. Um, yeah, we're not playing that. Coming off a loss last week, I definitely want to hit some new cards. Want to mix it up on Ricardo because I think he's kind of figured out what to do against my black wings. I think he realizes now that he just has to outpace me as fast as possible, not let me get him in the grind game, especially since I've been playing oppression recently. So I don't know. We'll see what we do this week, but hopefully we can get some new cards, which nothing really that good. Some more to Jin monsters. Um, I'd have to look at my ritual lineup. You know, really, the highlight here is that we already got Drill Warrior. You know, I was scared that we weren't going to pull it at all, but uh, Bonds came through, baby. All right, just a couple of packs left here. Another Drill Synchron. Sun Dragon. We need Moon Dragon to complete the set, though. Oracle of the Sun. Ooh, that's a really good one. Drill Warrior. I forgot this was in this set. Um, Huh. We don't have dandelion which is unfortunate but you know this is still a really good card huh this might be an interesting way to go this week i don't know well we're definitely gonna have to think about it though that's a really good pull all right halfway point all we hit is drill warrior which i'm not complaining that's a really amazing card and i'd love to be able to play it if we can but no other cards that i was hoping for <laughs> ultra rare uh what is this king of destruction yeah never playing that unfortunate Ritual Cage. Okay, so we got one pack left here, and what's it going to be? Nothing really great. All right, so quick overlook here at what we got from Absolute Power Force. Some Panda Borgs, which is the Black Rose. A couple of Djinns, which are all cool. Um, Grave Keepers, but I don't think I can abuse them anyway. Some Fire Ants, a couple of Drill Synchrons here. Um, nothing, nothing spectacular, honestly, in the main. But we do pull the Drill Warrior, which is absolutely amazing because it means that my quick draw synchrons are now live. Junk War is not the only target for them. Of course, last week I pulled quick draw and multiple level leaders. So this week we're gonna have some fun. Synchron is my favorite deck and Drill Warrior gives it life. All right, well, we're coming up on the last few packs here and the Drill Warrior literally is the only decent thing out of here. Minus a couple of weird things like Concentrated Light and the Gravekeeper Steel, but no Descendant, no Fiendish Chain, no Hamster. <laughs> Double Drill Warrior. Um, man, did we even play two back then? I can't remember. I swear it was just the one. I don't know. I guess I'll take it. All right. We got a token. Sweet. All right. Last pack. Hopefully we hit one of the cards I want, like a Nimble Hamster or a Phoenix Chain. And of course, I didn't even hit any Descendants either. So at least one of those would be nice. Flip it up. I don't think I did. Yeah, unfortunate. So I really don't get to abuse any of those in the way I was hoping to. That's kind of unfortunate, but alas, it is what it is. Double Drill Warrior though is cool, but outside of that really, um, there's some concentrated lights in here. That might be good in the future. Uh, I guess it could be okay right now, but oh well. All in all, an okay opening just because Drill Warrior, but I don't know. Hopefully next set treats us better. The second set of the week is the Shining Darkness, and there's a ton of stuff in here. Not only do we get a bunch of new Blackwing support, but we get Spore. We get a Herald. This set is honestly pretty loaded, but Spore is probably going to be the deciding factor in between who gets the better pulls this week between me and Justin. So let's get into it and just hope for Spore. Okay, some Blackwing support, and there it is. We do get the Spore. We are good to go. Of course, I have Lone Fire. I have the Giga Plant. If only we had access to Dandelion, we get a second Spore. Okay, we get Intercept Wave and a, a playset of Spore confirmed. Um, I'm feeling good. We get Key Mouse as well. Uh, Infernity's also made their debut in this set, but I can't remember if they're actually usable for us or if they need a side set to be good. Synchro Magnet is a pretty good tuner to have right now. All right, Shining Darkness. There is a couple of cool cards in here. Spore is a common, which actually could work towards our like doppel plant strategy if we decided to go that route now that we have Drill Warrior. I actually think it'd be kind of ironic if we did go that route because that's some of Ricardo's favorite cards to play. So if we could bring it, I don't know, it'd be pretty fun. There's also Ronin Tone in this set, which was the last of the frog support really that I'm missing. So hopefully we can get that. It's only a common, so I'd like at least one. And yeah, I mean, everything else, there's a couple good things sprinkled, but really the stuff I'm hoping for this week is all low rarity. So flip it up, first pack, 
Starting out with a splendid rose. Don't think we're ever going to play that, but hey, we'll take it, I guess. Next pack. Infernities. Oh, oh, Infernities. That's pretty crazy. Chaos Trap Hole is also really good. Might side deck that. Next pack, Infernity Break. That's pretty crazy. Trigon, that's actually pretty decent as well. This was only played in Dragon Rulers. Um, I don't know if anybody knows about that build, but you know, it's it was pretty niche. It was pretty cool. Here's Gen X Undyne and Gen X Controller. Shout out to Mermail, one of my favorite decks of all time, but we really can't play that in this series. Unless I get like hat tricked around the time that I can get the water structure deck. Duh. But even then, one Dragoon, one Marksman, and one Infantry. Doesn't really sound that great, but hey, we'll take it just in case. Some more Infernities, some more X-Savers. Um, honestly, Spore was the big one to me, uh, unless I can pull that Herald. Um, oh, of course, Ronin Toad is also in this, so I guess a playset of him would be preferred. Some more Black Wings, a second Ronin Toad. Will we see the playset? We'll get a Gen X Neutron, which I'm not sure if I can do anything with. We get a third Ronin's Hode, we get some more Infernities, Gen X Undyne, we get Dawn of the Herald, which is the ritual that I would need for Herald. More Watt support, Mouse Key, that's pretty legit. That's a level one tuner, that's a beast. It can bring it out off of Rescue Cat, just saying. And there's a Silent Graveyard, that's a pretty good quick play spell. Be nice to get a couple of those for later. Oh, Watt Giraffe, I'm telling you, the Watts are coming together. Hey, okay, there's Ronin Tonin, awesome. Leeching the Light is a pretty good side deck card. It was better against like Agents, which we really won't see, pretty sure, but you know, it's a cool one. A Chaos Goddess, which is pretty interesting. Um, I'm not sure how usable it is for me right now, but I can, I'm obviously gonna look into it. Okay, and then in our final pack, nothing really. All right, quick overview. We did get a Battery Man Fuel Cell. We have quite a bit of Battery Man. I'm not sure how useful they're gonna be, um, but you know, they're they're pretty prevalent in my collection. We got some X Sabers, we got the Gen X Neutron, of course we got some Synchro Magnets, a couple Black Wing cards, but I don't remember how useful this these Black Wings are. Of course, in real life, you know, a, a ton of Black Wings had been banned or eliminated at this point, and of course, they're all, at, at the very least, at one. Gale, of course, is still at one for us. Um, so, I don't know, the deck could still be good, it could still be bad, you know, our card pool is pretty ridiculous, so it's really hard to say. Um, Ronin Toads, I think I have most of a frog deck, uh, I'm not sure if I'm missing anything. Um, Spore, of course, was the main the main card from this set, and only a common, which is crazy. We did get Dawn of the Herald, but we did not pull the Herald Ritual itself. Um, and we did pull one extra deck monster in Chaos Goddess, but of course the highlight here is Spore. Honestly, my pools could not have gone better this week. Uh, I could have got the Herald, I guess, and, and a couple other things in the previous set. But between Drill Warrior and Spore, I got all I could really ask for this week. Um, I'm really excited about what this week has to offer. And now that I have not only Drill Warrior, but Quick Draw Synchrons, and due to my losing, I do have Double Drink Synchrons. So, well, I have the makings of what could potentially become a doppel deck and if i get a doppel deck i'm going to be having a lot of fun but for now we got to focus on this week and figuring out what's going to happen black wings are still a potential threat but of course without dark strike fighter we'll see what they can really do and magical scientist is now banned so we do lose out on getting free bodies onto the field um honestly this is a really interesting week and i'm really excited about what's what's going to happen today so let's just get into it Another Infernity Mirage, that's pretty hilarious. Third Undyne, second Ronin Tonin. There's a Pashul as well, which is a pretty decent Earth Tuner, but again, I don't really have X Saber support and I don't even have Rota, so eh. Third Mirage, wow, a playset, that's hilarious. Still haven't seen Spore yet, that's kind of weird. It's only a common. Oh, okay, there he is, Spore. <laughs> Just needed the one, so I'm glad I have that now. Third Ronin Tonin, that's awesome. Got a lot of Infernities this week, but really, <laughs> there's some cool X-Saber support, but again, I don't really have the support to play it. Oh well, I really like X-Sabers though, that's a shame. But like I was saying, there's a lot of Infernity support in here, but uh, I don't know if I could really play any of it. I don't know, it'd be fun to flip through and see what I can make work, but really there's a lot missing. Last pack, flip it up, hoping for the best. Uh, we got something, uh, what is this? Ally of Justice Laser? 
Light Gazer. Uh, okay, generic. Gains 200 attack for each light monster in your opponent's graveyard. Uh, okay, it's a generic level 8, and it gets beefy with the lights in his grave. I mean, it's not bad, especially if he's on a light deck, but right now he's kind of been, like, chaos, so there might be, like, two or three in there, and even if there's two, that puts him at 28, and that's equal to Colossal Fighter, so I don't know. Maybe I'll throw it in just because, but really it's not that game-changing. All in all, we have a few things in here that I was hoping to get. The Ronin Tonins being number one. There is a single Spore in there. Some of the Gen X support is pretty cool. We do have the Drill Warrior from last set, so hopefully I can think of a way to build that because that'd be really hilarious to try to bring against Ricardo. All in all, I'm really excited for this week because I have more options on the table. Blackwing is definitely something I'll fall back on if I can't think of anything. And man, I'm definitely going to look at the Infernity stuff. But again, I just don't think with all the stuff I do have that I'll really be able to use it the best way possible. I'll see you guys at the deck builder. Peace. Well, guys, I'm excited this week because I'm playing one of my favorite decks of all time, Synchrons. Starting things off, we have double quick draw Synchron because, of course, we have the level leaders meaning that I can easily abuse it with Junk Warrior or Drill Warrior. Uh, next up, we got Junk Synchron. I'd really love a third one, but I'm not trying to get hat tricked. And I think at this point, it's impossible for me to get hat tricked again until next season. So we only get the two. Um, no Doppel Warrior yet, but you know, we'll get there eventually. We do get the Phoenix Seed, the Double Ryko, the Quibble, and the Double Love Leaders. And of course, Plague and Spore, meaning that Junk Synchron has a couple targets to go into. Plague Spreader, this card is insane. You know, I just have so many cards that dump into the grave. And once it's there, it's live. Of course, if it's in my hand, it's live. It's on the field, it's live. It's in my grave, it's live. Uh, possibly the best undead tuner of all time. Next up, we got Spore. This card is insane. Of course, it's searchable via Lone Fire and one for one, so I have multiple ways into it. Um, the graveyard effect is ridiculous. This card's amazing. What can I say? Yeah, I can't wait to show off what it can do. Our boss monsters return with Dad and BLS. Amaryllis once again returns because, of course, we are running the Lone Fire Blossom and the Phoenix Seed. Giga Plant is here once again because of Lone Fire Blossom. Uh, double Cyber Dragon because it is back at two and it's just a free body. Witch of the Black Forest and Sand Gam because of course they search out everything. Lone Fire because with Drill Warrior I can recycle my one Lone Fire. Of course I would have preferred to have two, but having the one is fine if I can just abuse it infinitely. Next up is Rose Fairy. It's really just here in case I have to search it with Sand Gam or Witch for a, a combo extender. Uh, Phoenix Seed is at the 1 because, again, Lone Fire can search it, Witch can search it, Sand Gets can search it. There's no need for me to be playing more than 1. Double Ryko, these are my charge targets. They thin out the deck. They pop either back row or monsters. Quill Bolt is here because, well, I ha I'm running tuners. Quick Draw Synchron dumps it in Grave and then can bring itself back. And though I don't have a level 7 target, you know, it just sets up plays for every other tuner in my deck. Of course, another thing we're running Quill for is for the Future Fusion. If I just dump it in the Grave, it's... Kind of like a foolish burial, you know, it's a little more costly, but at the end of the day, the main goal of Future Fusion here is a deck thin, not some kind of tech. We've got the double level leaders, because I want to see it, but I don't want to see it too often. Three would be way too many, but of course, with Quick Draw Synchron, this is an instant Junk Warrior or Drill Warrior, and with my level 5 or above monsters here, this card is easily abusable. Graceful Charity, Painful Choice, you know what these two do. Future Fusion, once again, is here as a, essentially a super foolish burial. Charge is here to deck in, and of course bring me my, my right goes in case of problematic cards. Overload Fusion is here just in case I can pull off what I did last week. A one for one is here because of Spore and Spore alone, but of course the level leaders aren't bad either. Reborn Premature because of course it's it's the 5Ds error. Bringing back tuners and non-tuners is, is the way to play. Scapegoat is here because Drill Warrior Control. Change of Heart again, our monsters, our synchro material. Raigeki, uh, I just gotta get rid of monsters on the field, you know. Turinade is here because I'm afraid of Stardust Dragon, and while I do like Heavy Storm, I can't really rely on it with Stardust Dragon running around. One MST in case of oppression. Solemn Judgment because it's Solemn. Double Bottomless because, of course, Solemn is just that one. Compose to deal with problematic synchro monsters, and Call of the Haunted because, again, I want to bring back pretty much everything here. You know, it's, it's nice not having to deal with Dark Strike Fighters, so I can play the deck a little more freely versus having one goal in mind or having to worry about one specific monster. Even though I'm not worried about one specific monster in Dark Strike Fighter, I am worried about back row. So Dust Tornado and Heavy Storm enter the side deck for Oppression and pretty much Oppression alone. They're accompanied by Breaker because again, Oppression is that big of a pain. Dark Hole is here for additional monster removal. DD Warrior Lady is here because, well, 
sometimes just has a monster that I can out and DD Warrior Lady basically has to sacrifice herself. Uh, double Phoenix Wind Blast to make sure that I can bounce whatever I need to. My own Royal Oppression in case I feel it's necessary. Double Right Gekki Break because, well, you know, similar to Wind Blast, sometimes you just gotta get rid of that monster. One Kyoko so Justin can't banish my cards or his cards. Triple Shadow Imprisoning in case Justin's still on Black Wings. And one Divine Wrath, which I really wish I could put in the main deck, but I'm just, I just don't have the space for it this week. As for the extra deck, we got Double Drunk Warrior because, well, he's easy to abuse and, of course, it's a quick way to, to Synchro Climb with Quick Draw Synchron, but it's also a card that I might have to just go into for a, a nice beat stick. One Magical Ender is generic level 5. Our level 6 lineup returns pretty much intact, except we're now we're adding Drill Warrior. Uh, Drill Warrior is pretty much just here to recycle the Lone Fire or the Junk Synchron if need be. Of course, you can also revive a BLS or a Dad that accidentally gets milled. Uh, Drill Warrior is just an incredible card, and I'm so happy that I pulled him. Goyo, Iron Chain, you know what these two do. Revive King Hades here is just making a cameo because, well, I don't really have anything better to put in the deck, but I don't want to not be running a full 15 card extra deck. Uh, Life Transfer, it's a generic level 7 that, you know, isn't Black Rose because I want to save that Black Rose effect. Black Rose is crazy. Uh, Arcanite Magician, again, this card's good, it's just that I don't really have a way to get into it that isn't through which the Black Forest. So it's it's here as a situational card, it's not the most optimal. Uh, Stardust Dragon, of course Stardust Dragon. Double Colossal Fighter because this card is just such a stupid, amazing beat stick. And then a Chimera Tech to make the future fusion live. Um, this week is going to be really fun. You know, we're not worrying about Dark Strike Fighter anymore. It should be time to just play the game and have fun for the first time in a couple weeks. So looking forward to this one. All right. So I've been debating all day what deck I wanted to bring this week. And I fell back on Degeneracy. This week we are playing Frog FTK. I'm missing some of the cards that really make it as consistent as it was back in the day. But this deck can still do exactly the same thing it was designed to do. In case you guys haven't seen this deck before, it revolves around Mass Driver. Basically a non-once per turn tribute one monster to inflict 400 damage. Basically what this deck is going to do is dump 20 frogs in the grave so that way we can special summon Ronin Tonin 20 times and use Mass Driver to inflict 8,000 damage to Ricardo. Really, as long as I can get Substitute, another monster on field, and access to Mass Driver, that's the FTK. This deck is really degenerate, and again, I don't have all the extra deck pieces that really make this deck shine, but I just think this deck is super hilarious, and while there is another deck I really wanted to play this week, I think next week with the two sets we're going to be opening, I can actually make that deck even better. So I'm going to hold the big guns for next week, and I think this week... We're rocking this monstrosity. So starting things off, Substitute, tribute a monster to special a frog from the deck, contribute itself, or really anything. The best thing to summon is the swap frog. Swap frog on normal or special, you can dump a level two water aqua from your deck. This gets us access to Ronin Tonin, and then of course can also dump a bunch of other frogs. Like I mentioned, we just wanna put 20 frogs in the grave to keep bringing back Ronin Tonin, and you really only need one of the Tonin, but we play two just in case it gets a DD crowed. Not only does the swap frog help get the stuff in the grave, but simply by going toad, bring out a frog, you contribute out the frog you summon for another frog, and that frog gets another frog, and that frog gets another frog, and so on and so forth. Like I mentioned, we have two Ronin Tonin, bringing itself back freely for the mass driver. Three swap frog, probably our best starter in the deck next to Substitute. This actually gets us access to Substitute by dumping it to the grave. Back in the day, Toad was at three, so it was a lot more likely you would see it in your opening turn. But since we don't, dumping it in the grave, we do have options, which you can see here in the spells. But just know this card is very, very amazing for the deck. After that, we got three copies of Dupe Frog, just a 2k wall that when it's sent to the grave, you can search a swap frog. This card misses timing like crazy, so really you're only going to search if it's destroyed by a card effect or battle. But it's a consistency card, so we'll definitely play it. Not only that, while it's on the field, your opponent cannot target other monsters for attacks. So if there's ever a time we can establish two dupe frog, essentially it's a wall that says your opponent cannot declare an attack, period. After that, we have the one treeborn frog. We only pulled the one, and I think at this time it is at one. I could be wrong, but... 
Again, I only have access to the one anyway. One flip flop frog of all the frogs I'm missing. This one I really wish I had multiples of. On flip, you can bounce monsters your opponent controls up to the number of frogs you control. So again, if you have one, it's one, two, it's two, etc., etc. After that, you can activate its effect to reset it face down to use for the next turn too. So again, it's not amazing, but it is technically removal. So it would have been nice to have more of these, but after going back to the opening, I literally only had one. After that, we have Poison Draw Frog at three. It has to be face up to get its effect, but when it's sent to the grave while face up on the field, you get to draw one card. So a little bit of draw power for the deck, I guess. Three Uni Frog. This one can just attack directly. Um, and then it also pops spells and traps when you do so. Not good, but not bad. Three Beals Frog. This one's like the worst. It gains 300 attack for your Tadpoles, and I'm playing no Tadpoles. Again, it's just a name that has frog in it. After that, we got two Submarine Frog. This is basically a 12k beater that does piercing. Again, we only had two of this. I would have loved to have played a third over these Beals. And then after that, we got the one Death Frog. Shout out to the Frogression series. If you know, you know. We have to play 20 frogs. We could probably get away with less, but it's just better if you do. And again, this is literally my 20th best frog. So got to play it. After that, we have the one Fishborg Blaster. Uh, I believe I opened two, but I'm only playing the one because I don't really have that amazing of a synchro lineup to abuse, such as Deloren, Brionic, Trishula. This card's really amazing, but right now I think one is fine because it doesn't really help me contribute to any combos. For the spells, Double Mass Driver. Again, you just want to see this. I wish I had three because I feel like I should be playing three, but again, I only pulled two, so we'll make it work. Double Moray of Greed, again, another card I wish I had three, but I only opened two. Just return two waters from your hand to the deck and then draw three. Again, we're just trying to dig for Substitute or Swap Frog or Mass Driver. And again, you have ways to deck thin like crazy, so you can even go Substitute, get that all established, deck thin by 20, and then start activating these draw spells to hit the Mass Driver. Really, it's pretty crazy if you can open one of these cards. Graceful Charity, this card was not legal during this time, so we'll definitely play it. Card of Safe Return, just the same as Charity, was not legal and is really amazing. Every time you bring back Ronin Tonin, you draw a card, so that's pretty ridiculous. Card Destruction, just putting your stuff in Grave, getting more cards. Painful Choice, another really crazy card. One for one, getting us our Substitute. Triple Salvage, this isn't very good as far as recovery, but it does help us with our combo. If you open Swap Frog or even Substitute, you have ways that you can get whatever you need in the grave, and then you can just add it back with Salvage and then go from there. Similar to the Salvage, we have the one Reborn in the Prem. Just summon a Swap Frog and dump the Substitute, bring them back, and then deck 10 by 20. And lastly, Heavy Storm and True Nade, just to get the stuff out of the way if we're going second and FTK. For the side deck, just a couple of going first cards. We have the one Confiscation, the one Drag Down to the Grave. Both of these let me look at his hand and maybe rip out DD Crow or something that he might have to stop me. We got the three goes in match for when we go first. Makes it to where even if we get stopped or don't open combo, this typically can stop most decks aside from Blackwing, really. Brain Control, Change of Heart, Snatch Deal, just amazing going second cards. Being able to steal whatever Ricardo puts on the field and then tribute it off for Substitute to deck thin by 20. MST and Cold Wave, just more back row hate if he's on a back row deck. Double Smashing Ground, just a great card for removal. I think it's at three now, so I'm glad I can play at least a two. It outs beaters and stuff like Banisher Radiance, so definitely want to side this. And lastly, 3DD Crow. I have a hunch Ricardo's going to probably go back to some kind of Synchron deck. We opened double Drill Warrior, so I would imagine Ricardo's lucky enough to at least pull one. And again, I know how much he loves his Synchron decks, so I would not be shocked if that's the route he fell back on this week. Moving on to the extra deck, I'm sure Ricardo mentioned it during his deck profile. We emergency banned Dark Strike Fighter. It has been every episode since that card's release that it has influenced the outcome of a game. And yeah, there's a reason Konami banned that card basically right after it came out. So Dark Strike Fighter is no more, and Ricardo really pushed for Magical Scientist as well. As time goes on, that card only gets better, so I'm all for it. If he wants to get rid of it, I definitely have his back on it. So since we don't have the Dark Strike Fighter, outside of that, really, this is just every generic synchro I think might come up. Really, again, we can make these with the Fishborg Blaster, but again, if we activate something like Monster Reborn, then maybe if he has his Junk Synchron, we can make Junk Warrior, or if he has his Quick Draw, then we can get Nitro Warrior. Or heck, even the Drill Warrior, which actually isn't bad in my deck either. So that'd be pretty funny if we could summon it against him. Nothing too crazy to write about. At the end of the day, we're just trying to FTK. <laughs>
I'm really excited for this episode. I hope we can pull off the FTK at least once, but obviously if we can pull it off twice, <laughs> that'd be even better. Ricardo is really gunning for a win this week. I know he wants that hat trick before this season ends. So I definitely want to make sure I can prevent that at all costs. If I can go hat trickless all season, that's a win in my book. I'm going to hit up Ricardo. It's time to rev it up. What's up, Ricardo? It's another week and another episode. How you doing, man? Pretty good. Um, feel dirty after last week but uh, you know it happens Man, it's that was so crazy i was just looking back at the replay once i was starting to do the editing for the episode i'm just like man i really got did dirty on that episode <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, uh, I was just shaking my head the whole time. It was crazy. <laughs> that <laughs> so, opening hand was too good. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I didn't ask you what the last card in hand was, but, I mean, either way, you had the perfect five-card combo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, this week, two new sets, a lot of really good stuff. A lot of it's low rarity, which I really yeah. like. Um, whether or not it's going to change our meta, we will see. I know there's some stuff that can kind of go towards other decks in the future, so I really mm -hmm. like that. But for sure, a really big thing this week, Dark Shark Fighter and Magical Scientist are now gone. They, uh, they're very powerful cards, and I mentioned it earlier in my profile. The Dark Strike Fighter, since at least in our series, every yeah. episode it has determined the outcome of a game in each episode it's been in. And I think that just shows how crazy of a card it is. Not only that, it was banned right after the card came out as well in like real Yu-Gi-Oh history. So I don't know, very glad it's gone, but also, you know, it's just one of those fun cards to play, even though it's degenerate. Yeah, yeah it was fun. It was fun for the couple weeks we had it, but I think that anything more from here on out, it's just, uh, it's a little too much. And there's no need to, to make every episode Dark Strike Fighter Turbo. <laughs> right <laughs> and that's kind of what i wanted to do this week i'm not gonna lie but then when we <laughs> talked about it i was like you know yeah it'd probably be for the best might as well not be degenerate anymore <laughs> <laughs> but the new week i'm super excited you ready to do this bud yeah let's get into it all right man good luck yeah Ooh. Ooh. the drive my did faith not and drive work. and power failed <laughs> Well, I have to go first this week. Oh, okay. See how lucky we get. Ooh, okay. Not a bad start. Hmm. We're going to draw for turn. Mm -hmm. Stand by, main phase. Yeah, you're good. All right. I'm going to start things off with a card you haven't seen yet. And I've been itching to play this card for quite some time. I am going to discard a water monster to mm. special summon Swap Frog mm. to the field. Yeah. And we're going to use yeah. Swap Frog's effect to dump a water. Mm -hmm. In this case, I am going to just dump a Ronin Tonin, the new water monster from this set, to the grave. Man, I, I should have thought about Frog being a possibility. Yeah, I've been uh, definitely itching to play this for sure, at least in some variation. Mm hmm. Uh, next, I'm going to activate Card of oh. Safe Return. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to go ahead and banish this frog from the grave and special summon Ronin Tonin back to the field. Mm. And uh, I'll draw one card. All right. I will now activate the Swap Frog. I'll bounce it back to hand and get an extra normal summon for a frog. Mm -hmm. um, but before doing that, I am going to now discard another water from my hand to the grave to re-special summon them to the field. Mm -hmm. And once again, I will use Swap Frog's effect to dump another copy of Ronin Tonin. Mm -hmm. And Card of Safe Return is banned for a reason. It's not once per turn. So we will now special summon again another yep. Ronin Tonin to the field and draw one. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Um, I'm pretty walled up now, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate Swap Frog again, bring it back to hand, and mm. then I think after that I'm just going to set a monster face down, and hmm, I'll set this guy, and I think I'm just going to pass. All right. Draw. 
what to do about frogs. Okay. You know, I gotta go classic here and uh, do a tea set and pass. Ooh, okay. Giving me another shot. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, I'm sorry, bud. That's uh, pretty crazy. Hmm. hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. I can't end it right now. But maybe. Maybe we got a shot. Okay, let's see. Giant true name. Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, I got to protect myself as much as possible here. So I'll go ahead and compulse one of your toads sure okay that goes to hand this will go to hand as well and we are going to just go ahead and discard that toad to the grave for swap frog mm -hmm. and use the swap frog effect to dump a water and mm -hmm. this time we're going to dump the legendary substitute mm. <laughs> 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 all right <laughs> <laughs> I love that reaction. <laughs> okay, I am now going to activate Swap Frog and bring him back to hand. Yeah. And then I'm going to activate Salvage to add two yeah. waters. I'll get the Substitute and the Ronin Tonin back to my hand. Yeah. Where's water imprisoning mirror when you need it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, next I will normal summon the Substitute, obviously. Yeah. Um, let's see. Next, I'm going to go ahead and use its effect. I'll tribute the Ronin Tonin to Special Frog. Mm. In this case, I will bring out a copy of the Beals Frog just to immediately tribute that off to Special Summon Death Frog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we can uh, tribute that one off. Special Summon a Poison Draw Frog. And then Poison mm -hmm. Draw for Poison Draw. Poison draw, poison draw, <laughs> and then we'll tribute this one off for a swap frog, mm -hmm. and that swap frog is gonna dump treeborn frog to the grave. Mm -hmm. Then we will use the swap frog as tribute fodder for another swap frog, deck thinning a bunch. Um, then we're gonna use that swap frog to dump a let's see a unifrog. Tribute this off, and we're just gonna blitz through the rest of the frogs. We're gonna go tribute that for Uni, tribute that for Dupe, mm -hmm. tribute this for the submarine, tribute this for a Uni, tribute this, and we will end on this Dupe frog. Mm -hmm. Now, before we continue, I think I will discard a card from my hand to the grave um in this case i think i'm going to go ahead and discard a fishborg blaster mm -hmm. to special summon swamp frog <laughs> <laughs> and then i'm gonna of course bounce this to hand uh i am going to discard this ronin tonin to bring back the fishborg mm-hmm and I do control a frog, so I'm going to flip summon this flip flop frog and bounce this monster back to hand. Mm. And I <laughs> I actually just misplayed a little bit, but um, it's not it's not too too big a deal. At least I don't think it is. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and synchro for six. That'll get me a Gaia. Mm -hmm. And then I will discard. Let's see. I will discard this to special summon a Swap Frog. Then I'm going to activate that card of safe return, which I should have activated before using the Fishborg. But either way, not a big deal. We'll special summon Ronin Tonin by banishing a frog from the graveyard. And I'll get to draw a card. Mm -hmm. and then once again, I will banish another frog to bring out the other Ronin from the grave to draw another card. It's getting frustrating here. I need to draw better cards. <laughs> it's bro, okay. You got, 
11 cards in deck what you mean i know bro that's why i'm frustrated <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna salvage to add two to hand oh my goodness this is ridiculous you know i'm starting to see why fishboard was banned yeah right uh we're gonna discard one to bring back the fishborg now now unfortunately these ronin tonins cannot be synchro summoned with but you know it is what it is i'll draw one and thank you okay <laughs> sorry ricardo but i believe that's game <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> so let's make sure i have enough fodder frog ftk is coming in we'll go 400 800 then we'll go let's see 12 16 and then we got 2000 and let's see how many others so i would need to bring out you'll have 6000 so mm. i need to do it 15 more times so if i have 15 frogs then i'm good let's see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 uh that's game sir 12, you decked out <laughs> 13 <laughs> luckily card of save return is optional 14 mm -hmm. and 15 <laughs> exactly enough for game i also have the prem in my hand but uh you know what constantly bringing back <laughs> degenerate uh, and i could have brought the fish borg back by ditching a water as well once i brought a road in would have been All enough right. to do almost nine thousand so, in that <laughs> fish borgs uh all right <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> you know, we lost Dark Strike Fighter. I'm like, man, how else can I be degenerate this week? <laughs> All right, so I got to take first here. Yes, of Opening course. draw. Hmm. Damn, there's really not much I can do here except oh, set no. one, <laughs> set two, and pass. All right, here we go. Drawing for turn. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> Let me think here for a sec. Standby and main. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and fire it off. Uh, going to start yeah. with painful choice. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So we're going to try to be broken. Uh, I'm going to <laughs> send one for one to grave. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna send Monster Reborn to Grave. Heavy Storm, oops, that would be broken. All right, Heavy Storm to Grave. Mm. True Nade to Grave. And then we're also gonna go Salvage to Grave. Okay. Okay, so one for one gets you the frog. Reborn. Let's continue. Heavy and Trinity take for back row. I feel like <laughs> like Reborn is somehow the safest option. Really? Uh, I'll give you the Reborn. Okay. Reborn goes to hand. That's crazy. <laughs> the other cards are all insane too, so I don't blame you. All right. So I am going to discard a water yep. to special summon Swap Frog from him. Yeah. I will activate the effect to dump a water. Yeah. I'm going to just go ahead and chill here. I got no hand traps. Oh, no. All right. So then the substitute hits the grave. Yeah. And I'm going to activate that monster reborn you gave me, targeting the substitute. Yep. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Any, anything on seven? You're good. Oh, no. Okay. Substitute effect. Yeah. Swap frog effect. Yeah, you're good. Dump the Ronin effect once again. This time we'll bring out another swap frog. This swap will dump a treeborn frog. 
Hmm. And then from there, I'm basically going to bring out the rest from deck mm -hmm. to the grave. And we are going to basically just flow through the rest of this. Technically, I think I played into DD Crow doing it this way, but, uh, you know. Since you were kind enough to tell me you have no hand traps, right? You wouldn't lie to me, right? Of course not. <laughs> I would have maxied a long time ago. <laughs> we're going to end it with the good old boy, Death Frog, the champion himself. And, well, since we have decked into a bunch, next we're going to activate Moray of Greed. Mm. Yeah. And I do have two waters. We've got two more frogs for you. And we're just going to put them back into the deck and uh, shuffle it up. Draw three. <laughs> um, let's go substitute effect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bring out this little flippy frop frog. Activate mass driver. <laughs> Anything? You're good. No MST, no judgment. Oh no. no! And to get another frog in the grave, let's card destruction. One. Two, three. Next, I will activate Salvage, and I'm going to target two Swap Frogs. Yeah. I was just thinking about it, and it was actually a little risky to even do that card destruction because I actually could have given you a chance to get yourself a DD Crow. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, if you have it, you have it. But I think now that I have this Swap Frog, I can at least pitch a frog to Special Summon this one. Mm -hmm. And that'll get me at least a little more tribute fodder. And of course, now I can dump the second Ronin Tonin. I should have did this at the beginning of the combo, just because it helps me play around DD Crow. That was a little reckless on my part. But anyway, Mass Driver effect. Let's go ahead and fire it off. Burn you for 12. Yeah. And well, we got 20 frogs in the grave. So that's more than enough for game if you can't stop it. I cannot stop it. Mm -hmm. Oh, no way. 20 <laughs> frog. For another 8k of damage, 400 each. Banish them all, just constantly bringing back that Ronin Tonin for game. <laughs> what was the point of banning Dark Strike Fighter? <laughs> That's what we said when Dark Strike Fighter came out. We're like, why do we ban Chaos Emperor when this degeneracy gets to show itself next? <laughs> Uh, oh my god and you know what the craziest part about this is i almost didn't bring this this week but i was thinking that the only reason why i wouldn't bring this is if it gets hit on the ban list next week and it technically does substitute gets banned and that is you know rough but i only have one substitute anyway mm. so <laughs> doesn't really matter anyway but you know uh, <laughs> uh i've made it work with one and so uh yeah mass driver and substitute it's really all you need now that rodin tone came out this set <laughs> I, I can't believe i didn't expect frogs i should have expected frogs <laughs> you know it's so funny dude because like there was a while in the series where you would always mention frogs. You're like, I know Justin has that tree born. He's been wanting to play frogs. So, since we saw nothing of my deck, let's get this thing into the grave. Yeah, I, I, I need to mill out my deck too. You know, I don't think you got to see the entirety of it. <laughs> you know, it's pretty crazy because I didn't really even uh, get to see what you were playing this week. Yeah. Looks Damn. like you're on some kind of doppel plant this week with uh, Gigavice. Well, yeah. well, we don't have Doppel Warrior yet, so had to make do with what we had. Uh, once again, running the Future Fusion because it means I can send Quillbolt <laughs> to Grave. Um, it's a free Foolish Burial, essentially, so we had to run the Chimera Tech. Mm -hmm. um, the main reason that I was running the Quick Draws was because I pulled my boy Drill Warrior um, oh, nice. That card's pretty broken. Of course, last week, you know, I, I pulled the level leaders, so they were here as well. Um, of course, I, I pulled the boy. He was a common, so we got Spore, yep. which you know, enables crazy the plants. Is, I only got the one Spore. 
if I'm honest. I don't know about I, you. Let me see how many I got here. I pulled seven spores. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you know, we we ran the plants. We ran... Uh, I sighed this. I was hoping I would grab it, but uh, no such luck. Yeah, that card's pretty insane. <laughs> I also sighted in this just in case, but uh, did not see it, so... Did you side Ga crows this week? No, I didn't. You've been on black wings these past couple weeks, so I haven't needed them. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I know this week I sided three crow just in case you were on frogs, but I didn't think you would. But I, I had a feeling if you pulled drill warrior, you would try to play it because quick draw is a common and level eater was common. A lot of this deck is like yeah. really, really low rarity. So I figured you yeah. might try to take it. Um, but again, I didn't know what you were playing this game two because I, you know, I didn't even get to see what cards were in your deck game one. So all yeah, I did was so, put in MST, honestly, that. as back row removal. <laughs> Man, when I did my deck profile, I mentioned as long as I can pull off the FTK just once, I would consider this episode a win. I knew the deck was super consistent, right? So really... Mm -hmm. I only have two mass driver. I went back to my openings and even in the reprint set we opened, I didn't get another one. I only had mm. the two, which I think is really all you need. But unless if you don't see it, you can't really burn for game, right? So yeah. the logic was I played 20 frogs because 20 times 400 is exactly 8,000 minimum. Mm. I probably could have gotten away with playing like 18 and then played a couple more draw cards. But I was really lacking in the draw card department um really all i had was these mores i only opened two in my opening also mm -hmm. but i did have the uh i did have the card destruction which you saw and of course the card of safe return which was like really insane so yeah i also had the graceful charity mm -hmm the uh card of safe return and really the card of safe return was the one that really made up for my lack of draw power because i knew if i hit it then in theory i could draw a lot of cards to help dig for the mass driver but mm -hmm. really i mean you saw it in action it's all about getting two bodies on the field one of them being substitute if i can accomplish that then i get to de deck then by 20 cards essentially yeah and that in combination with any of my multiple draw cards makes it to where hopefully once i have 10 cards left in deck i can hopefully draw into a mass driver and then just burn you from game for there this deck that i brought today while it was crazy it's definitely not its full power version and like i mentioned the ban list really prevents us from ever getting rid of this so i think mm -hmm. going forward i think i'm just gonna say we need to ban one of these cards whether it's substitute or mass driver up to you. I don't care which one you think is more broken. I think Mass Driver has a lot of other FTKs technically, and Substitute's pretty crazy because it deck thins by 20. But yeah. I think deck thinning by 20 versus burning for game, I don't know. It's kind of debatable. I mean, looking at it, I think Mass Driver has a lot going for it in terms of just you know, like as we go further and further in, we get monster spam coming out the ass. I think Mass Driver is a little more broken here. Like right. It's just like another spell version of Stark Strike Fighter, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas, like, Substitute, like, you know, the Ronin Toads, you know, it'd be fun to see them, you know, like, once we get Gachi Gachi out, you know. That's true, get into... that's true. So I, I, I think it Mass Driver would be the one that has to go, just because Substitute, it's busted, but I don't think we've really seen what it can do in a non-FTK deck. Whereas right. Mass Driver just enables degeneracy. That's true. Well, okay. Well, going forward, let's ban Mass Driver so this doesn't happen again. And uh, we'll see if that solves any of the problems going forward. Ugh. Well, this week, uh, I want to say it was fun, but uh, <laughs> I don't think you got to really even summon a monster, to be completely honest. No. But... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry Ugh. for going this route this week. I felt like I had to do it because, again, if the ban list doesn't change it, I wanted to bring it to the forefront now. That way yeah. we can get it over with. Definitely looking forward to next week. We have a lot of really amazing cards. Star Strike Blast and also 
Duelist Revolution. They are two amazing sets. Also, Effect Veiler's in there. We still have priority, technically, so mm. Effect Veiler's not super amazing, but it technically could help stop this FDK, even though we're banning it, right? But Yeah, yeah and then Exceeds. Yep, two more episodes on this channel, and then uh, we take a little break, and we hop over to Flash TCG. I'm super juiced. Yep. I was a little nervous this episode just because I knew if this Frog FDK didn't work, the next episode you could get the hat trick. But I think by winning this week, I think I solidify making it to where I cannot get hat tricked for the yeah. remainder of the season, if I'm correct. I believe so, because... Uh, we got the Duelist Star Strike episode and then Storm and Extreme Victory. Yep. All right. That was my main goal was don't get that <laughs> trick. I'm glad, glad I accomplished that, man. Season oh. victory. <laughs> what a tragedy. What an absolute tragedy this episode was. All right, bud. This was a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to next week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's hoping to see you guys next time. Peace.